Finally, I'm able to bring you the next part of my series on pixel art. Um, it's been a really busy couple of weeks for me with photographing weddings around England and right now I'm still in Scotland due to this tremendous storm that's come over the Irish Sea, meaning my flight today, which was meant to be at around 2pm, was cancelled. So that's a bit frustrating, but never mind. Um, on the plus side though, this means I have had time to actually start putting together this episode. Um, I've also spent my time wisely up in Scotland. It's been really great to catch up with my friends here and also to uh, have some amazing Thai food and finish doing with them and also doing some uh, filming up here for a future documentary that I'm putting together for the channel. So look out for that. I won't spoil what it is just yet. So. So at the moment I'm actually currently sat in the summer house of where I've been staying and this is nothing like summer outside with something like a 60 or a 70 mile an hour gale blowing around me. In fact the roof of the summer house, part of it was damaged earlier on so thankfully not hurt. So on with the episode. Last time I mentioned I was actually going to start with some animation but I've actually changed tact a little bit. Whilst I do have an overall idea of where we're going to take this series I haven't actually planned everything down to the nth degree. So as a change to what I said we'll be doing in the previous episode, we're actually going to focus on character portraits. Um, this is a really exciting topic which actually makes a lot of sense following on from our last episode. Um, this episode also had a few delays to technology unfortunately. Um, whilst I've been really enjoying using my Real Amiga 600 to create pixel art, I've had a, hit a bit of a snag. Um, you see, when drawing you need a faithful representation of what you see is actually what you're going to get and it seems that my screen recording equipment can only record my SCART to HMI conversion box output when set to 720 or 1080p widescreen which unfortunately isn't the Amiga's sort of 4.3 or square as some people might refer to it format when set to like the Amiga's native output it just doesn't record anything on my Elgato device so it means that I'm drawing in widescreen and everything gets stretched. Um, so this means judging proportions is really difficult. So the upshot of this is that this is a real shame because I'm actually finding it much more natural and easier to pixel using the real hardware. And my Alpha Data Mega Mouse um, than using, say, emulation. Um, this means the character portrait I originally started whilst using Yamiga was on a stretch display, which um, when I actually looked at it on a narrow um, output, you know, like the proper square output as it were, the pitch was too narrow. So this means that I have done one part of the episode under emulation using the correct aspect ratio, uh, where we'll be drawing one portrait in black and white and grayscale for shading, and then we're going to switch over to the native Amiga 600 output, where I was colouring the first portrait that I started. I think this will all make sense, so it probably sounds more confusing when I explain it than actually when you see it. And um, I'm sure also because I started this with emulation, you're going to see me struggling somewhat using my MacBook Air's trackpad. And it will show that even with uh, some experience, there are struggles. So hopefully if you find yourself um, uh, getting frustrated as you follow this episode, don't worry. You're going to see me seemingly making a bit of a mess of things actually at the start of this. Just as I'm struggling to get the trackpad to follow my movements. But it will show how with a bit of patience you can get things going in the right direction so just uh, I hope you enjoy it and I hope that made some sense. So let's get started. Look at the start like we did last time, creating a colour canvas and going to set colour zero to a colour we can work against but one we won't use in our final design. If you're not sure why we're doing this, check out part two of my pixel art series which explains this in greater detail. Next we'll create a spread of four grayscale colours. We're going to create a 64 by 64 pixel character portrait. This gives us plenty of scope to get the character down. We'll start with creating the face, and I'm going to do a fairly typical three quarters manga style portrait. To start with, we'll create a black and white sketch of Miyaki Yama from one of my favorite animes, Kayon. So, I've started creating a box that will contain a 64 by 64 pixel image that I'll draw. Then I'll create a perfect circle to make the top half of the face, and then sketch the jawline of the character. This won't start out perfect right now, but we're just getting the basics down. 
You'll find when you sketch that your strokes won't be perfect, so you can go back to tweak these like I do. I'm also not afraid to use the curve tool to get a basic idea of the curve for the jawline for example, but I will tweak this pixel by pixel to make it perfect. I also draw in the position of the left ear. I'm also drawing in a couple of sign guides that will help you see how these manga portraits are proportioned. The horizontal guide runs from the top ear and gradually curves down to show the face in three quarter view. The vertical guide is slightly curved and is biased towards the right of the portrait to maintain perspective. Put simply, if you draw two eyes the exact same size on a three quarters view, it will look a little odd as you've lost the sense of perspective so the right eye is drawn a little narrower as a consequence. Finally, for positioning I have drawn a pixel for the nose and the mouth. In this case, with the portrait of Mio, I'm sticking to the way the original was drawn, so the nose is almost non-existent and the mouth is literally just a couple of pixels. Also at this stage I draw in the eyebrows, a reasonable number of pixels above the eyes, this is just to maintain a standard manga portrait look. Eyebrows are important for a character's expression regardless of the style of artwork that you're creating and in this case it'll be a relaxed but slightly happy portrait so we need nice arched eyebrows. Again the right eyebrow is narrower than the left to maintain a sense of perspective. The next step is to draw in a rough line of the hairline to indicate where I shouldn't devote too much time in drawing e.g. that part of the jawline. Also here I start adding some details to the eyes, getting the pupils drawn and the catch lights in the overall eye. I've also positioned the neck as well in here. From here we are finessing details. This part of me drawing in the hair should give you a bit of reassurance because at this stage it looks a bit of a mess. That's because it is and the trackpad on my MacBook isn't helping. I also draw outside the containing box. I want to make sure I get the proportions correct and the flow of the hair also correct. These lines that go outside the box can be quickly erased. Finally, I start indicating the top of Mio's school uniform with the collar of a blouse and blazer. You'll hopefully see that the sketching at the moment looks very rough and scrappy, and this is just so I can get the details down with the aim of refining quite significantly. Once Mio's fringe or bangs are drawn in, I start the process of shading. Shading will follow the same principles we discussed in the second episode on pixel art. In summary, I'm considering the direction of light and using grayscale is a great way of simplifying the shading process. I'm also working from a manga drawing which is in colour and using grayscale simplifies transferring that shading before you move on to the colour process. see fantastic ways to employ just black and white or grayscale shading, pick up a manga, for example Neon Genesis Evangelion, and just marvel at Yoshiyuki Sadamoto's gorgeous drawings that will inspire you. At first I just used blocks of grey to shade in the image, before moving on to the detailed shading. Finally, I tweak the position of the right eye by picking it up and dropping it down as a brush. Isn't this art great for this? over to my Real Amiga 600 for the final stage of the shading in grayscale. If you want more commentary on this stage of the process, I really recommend watching part two of my video on Pixar, which explains this in greater detail. The difference here is we have a much larger canvas to work with, with 64 by 64 pixels in this case. I spend quite a bit of time on Mie's eye, but that's normal for manga. It seems the eyes always get quite a bit of special attention. Halfway through this process you will see I split Mio's face to make it a little taller. Again don't be ashamed of having to make corrections like this, embrace the digital canvas. If this is a pencil sketch right now, you'll be hoping that your outlines are nice and faint. If you end up making adjustments like this, it will show your powers of observing proportions and what looks right to you are definitely getting increasingly well tuned. switch 
to you and your sour. First, I'll show you the most simple part, the ribbon on Yui's blouse I've created a suitable teal already in a palette for that, due to me drawing originally on a widescreen uh, display of my Omega 600's output. You'll see we have picked up Yui where I shaded in the four simple greys, so hopefully this blends somewhat seamlessly. My basic principle on creating the colours is to stick to a pair of colours where possible, especially on systems like the Amiga, where we have a limited colour palette count of probably around 32 colours. I start with a basic skin colour and then the brown shading of Yui's eyes. I use the same brown for the hair as well, at least for now. At this point I expand the colour palette from 8 colours to 16, but this is all you'll need for this sketch in total. I set up this palette to use this idea of colour pairs, where you'll have the main shade and then either a highlight or a shadow complement of that shade. Depending on your portrait, you may also need a shadow, mid-tone and highlight for that colour, but I try to restrict myself to just fit the limitations of the system, so also you'll see I'm more easily able to demonstrate the basics of colour shading through creating this more restricted palette. You will also see I don't create the palette in one go, but rather as I go along. This helps me develop the palette in a more methodical way. Also, as part of the reorganisation of the palette, I end up changing some of the first eight colours, which gives Yui a rather odd pink hair colour. But in Dulux Paint, we can remap the colours to restore Yui's hair back to brown. This is only done because I like to pair distinct hues together with either their shadow and or highlight complements to make this easy to visualise the relationship between tones in the palette. The shading with colour is done again according to where the light is falling. So for example, Yui's neck is a different blush shade as it will be under her chin and generally the neck is in shadow as a consequence. This also partly extends her blouse colour with the grey shading. As per the previous videos, you will see I continuously tweak and change my shading as the character is built up and you should do the same. Don't expect the first mark you make when you can to be the very final one. At this stage, I decided to remove the back underline under Yui's eyes and have a more natural looking eye. The drawing may look destructive, but it's good to have a critical eye that can understand how to improve your pictures, but also not to the extent that stops you from creating in the first place. Remember, creativity is very much a regressive process, an iterative process. Be excited at the prospect of how over the next year, over the practice, how much you will improve. I know I'm always excited to see how far I will have come in a year's time. Also you will notice I edge some of the details such as the hair with a dark brown tone to anti-alias and sharp edges to the black. This softens the lines. Anti-aliasing is a video in itself, so I'll skip over the details for that now. You will also see I've put a divot checkerboard pattern on Yui's blazer to simulate a shadow. This is a neat trick to simulate colour without actually using a new colour. This is super effective in the days of CRTs hooked up to composite or even RF as the less than sharp appearance of displays meant the colours blended, enhancing the effect. And now our Yui Chan is drawn, we're going to display it using some very cool Amiga only colour tricks, which will form the basis of a demonstration um, which we're going to build up over the next few episodes. The Amiga contains, inside of Agnes and Alice, in the case of the AGA chipset, something called the copper. This has the ability to change the value of a location in memory when a display that is being rendered reaches a certain vertical or horizontal position. In the old days, this would have been a CRT beam tracing left to right, top to bottom of the entire screen at either 50 or 60 times a second, but even when displaying on an LCD as I am today, this works just the same. What this allows us to do, for example, is to change the colour of a palette register at a specific point during the screen display. So in effect, we can say that when the Amiga is showing line 40 of the display, change colour register 0 to red, which means every line in the Amiga's display after line 40 will be set to red. This is a simplification of the whole process, but again I could spend a whole episode explaining the copper. This is also how Amiga games typically use a rainbow blend of colours in backgrounds of games, giving the effect of displaying much more than 100 colours on the screen at any one time, even though typically the original enhanced Amiga chipsets could only display 32 colours. 
There are, of course, trick modes like extra half bright to get 64 colours, which we'll look at soon. But for now, I want to mention hold and modify mode or hand mode. This is a special mode that allows the Amiga to display all 4096 colours on the screen at once. I'm going to discuss hand mode properly at a later date, but it's a rather special mode, and with the help of an application like Art Department Professional, it's relatively easy to convert a true colour image into a hand image on the Amiga. So what we're going to do is create a small program that will display a hand image at the top, in this case a frame of Kaon from Sakai Ogulka High School, or Torosato High as it is in real life. I can claim no real credit for the drawing obviously because it's just digitised from a frame from the actual anime. Again we'll be looking at creating background art in yet another episode. So this image will display on the screen at the top and then below we'll create a new screen that will be just below the hand screen which will be a standard 16 colour screen. These two screens will make up the full 256 pixel height of a standard PAL Amiga low resolution screen. One trick we'll do on the bottom 16 colour screen is to use the copper to change the colour register to zero to different shades that aren't in the 16 colour palette as it moves down the screen. In effect, we'll be showing how we can create an awesome 4096 colour Amiga display that would have been possible in 1985. Pretty awesome, huh? So here it is. The idea is that we will develop this to display sprite characters on top of the homage at the top and the interactions and dialogue that will appear in the bottom panel below. This will display alongside the character portraits that I'll draw. This is really cool, huh? With the storage space for CD, hard disk, etc. Graphically rich games like this, employing these techniques are really possible even using the Amiga architecture from 1985. Anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed this episode. It's been a bit of an epic, both for you to watch and for me to create. I'm not sure what my next step in this series will be, as I don't want to commit to a specific topic that I suggest at the end of one episode, I need to find a better idea in the meantime. But we'll be looking at colouring sprite characters I'm sure very soon, and animating them as well, and putting together the whole project over the coming months. So, I guess all remains for me to say is, see you soon, bye!